Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Vargas. And I'm John Stossel. And this is 2020. Katrina was devastating. But so was State Farm. A lot of people were cheated. A lot of people were cheated. They wanted the people to know that we had arrived. They'd give and these two the sisters car. say they saw the cheating firsthand as independent adjusters working exclusively for State Farm Insurance. For all the world, you were State Farm. We are State Farm. Tonight, Corey Rigsby and her younger sister, Carrie, are speaking publicly for the first time about what they say went on inside the country's largest insurance company. Until this storm, we were very proud to work with State Farm, and we, we did believe they always did the right thing. We've never seen any kind of activity like this. What they say they saw at State Farm's Katrina offices in Mississippi was supervisors demanding that damage reports be buried, replaced, or changed so that insurance claims would not have to be paid. We realize this is, this is widespread. This damage report, the sisters say, would have backed up a policyholder's claim, but it was hidden in a special file with instructions, do not pay bill, do not discuss. I consider this to be a smoking gun. At one point, they even took pictures of a special shredding truck. State Farm says it shreds documents to protect policyholder privacy. The sisters believe it was done to destroy key documents. We felt, I think shock was at first because State Farm to put themselves out there uh, for fraudulent activity like this is huge, knowing that they could get caught. The Rigsby sisters' allegations, if proven, would support the suspicions of thousands of homeowners along the Mississippi Gulf Coast who have not been able to get the insurance money to rebuild their homes. State Farm covers almost a third of the homeowners in this area, and in lawsuits, many accuse it and other insurance companies of wrongly denying or lowballing their claims. It's cruel, and it's fraud, and it, uh, it's every damn thing bad I can think about it. This was the front porch, these stanchions. Retired Dr. Step. Wesley McFarland yeah. says he was yeah. outraged to be yeah. told by the and State Farm adjuster he would collect nothing yeah. for the total loss of his $400,000 home where his family had lived for decades. Devastating news for him and especially for his wife, Rosemary. And she just sat there and she uh, cried a little bit and she said, well, what are we going to do? The Wins, refugees from Vietnam who scrimped and saved to make a home for their three children, got the same devastating news from State Farm. When I was told that they denied my claim, I came out here and I cried. I sat on this one right here and I cried until 3.30 in the morning. Wind damage is supposed to be covered under State Farm policies. And during Katrina, there were gusts of up to 145 miles an hour. But water damage is not covered. The Rigsby sisters say what they discovered was that State Farm did whatever it could to find the damage was caused by water to avoid having to pay. So as long as it's water damage, as long as it's water. they're very happy. They're very happy. But if it's wind damage, then everything changes. Then they're on the hook. Exactly. The sisters say they saw a senior State Farm coordinator go to great lengths to pressure outside engineers to prepare reports concluding that damage was caused by water, not wind. And she pulled out an engineer report and she was flipping through it. Can you believe this engineer said wind damage? Call this company and tell them if we don't, if they don't change their report, we're not paying their invoice. So you heard that? I was standing a foot from her. And, and I believe she then followed up by saying, look at all these, she had a stack of engineering reports. On her desk. On her desk, and she said, look at all these engineering reports that, ha that have to go back or have to be changed. Mm -hmm. It took three engineering reports for State Farm to get one that concluded the wind's damage was caused by water. State Farm mistakenly sent her the first two, which um, both concluded wind damage was predominantly to blame. They tried to cheat me. They tried to cheat me right here. The winds, now living in a trailer, have hired a lawyer to sue State Farm. Whoever said calm comes after the storm probably had a State Farm agent. In its commercials and slogans, State Farm has long cultivated its image as the good neighbor. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They are not good neighbor and they're not our friend anymore. They are not. But the company says it has paid more than a billion dollars in claims in Mississippi and denies cheating anyone. We have not been cheating. We, of course we have not been cheating. 
Instead of a company official, State Farm provided a Mississippi lawyer, Wayne Drinkwater, who told me in advance he had not been given the facts to answer many of our questions. Brian, I don't know what the facts are behind this. I, I don't know what happened. Brian, I don't know the facts behind this case, as I have told you. But State Farm's lawyers strongly denied the company had demanded changes in engineering reports to harm policyholders. You put no come, pressure on the firms. To come to any kind of pre-set result. We do not do that. You don't promise more work or take away work? Based on results of reports, we do not do that. Because we're told by people who work for you that's exactly what happened right here. Brian, uh, that is not State Farm's policy, and as far as I know, we have no evidence that that has occurred. But it's not just the Rigsby sisters who say something funny has happened with the engineering reports. Certified engineer James Ken Overstreet says his report about the cause of the damage to the house that once stood here was secretly changed. Now, when I came out here, there were just snap trees everywhere. You know, just from the basis of that, there's a percentage wind damage to the house. His initial report concluded the damage was caused in large part by the wind. But Overstreet says someone, apparently at the engineering firm, wrote a new report for State Farm three months later, changing the conclusions from wind to water, and then signed his name without his knowledge or approval. Is that your signature? No, mine's a little different than that. Did, you didn't sign this? No. Did you write the words saying that it was rising waters and wind? No, I, mine said wind, a combination of wind. So somebody else wrote this and put your name to it? That's what it appears. The engineering firm denies being pressured and says it stands by the final report. I can do the print now. The Rigsby sisters have now downloaded thousands of documents from State Farm computer files and turned them and their own detailed statements over to federal and state prosecutors and to Mississippi's best known trial lawyer. My eyes popped out on the altered engineering reports and the, and the systematic way in which they were going about uh, treating homeowners. Dickie Scruggs, the lawyer who took on the big tobacco companies, is now taking on State Farm. And the Rigsby sisters' allegations are a big part of his lawsuits. And the Rigsby sisters, they know where the bodies are buried. Uh, they know who's who in that organization. They know how it works. And do you think the sisters have evidence that goes to criminal behavior? If this isn't criminal, nothing is. State Farm's lawyer maintained he had never heard of the Rigsby sisters. You're familiar with them? I am not. Is State Farm familiar with them? I do not know the answer to that. The Rigsby sisters say that is hard to believe. They say they told State Farm and its lawyers that they had given prosecutors thousands of company documents. And we said, OK, we well, just want to let you know right up front. This is what we've done. We believe there's been fraudulent activity, and, this, and we've turned it over for investigation. And then we were suspended at that point. For the Rigsby sisters, turning against State Farm was a big decision after working for the company for more than eight years. But it was when they came across the case of Dr. McFarland that they decided they had no choice but to go to authorities. And I had to be the one to tell them that we would not pay them any, any money for their home. And you thought you were doing wrong? Oh, absolutely. It was gut-riching. It was, it was horrible. It was wrong, and, um, and we, were, we were hurting him, and we didn't have to. All Dr. McFarland and his wife could do was to collect from the limited federal flood insurance program. They were forced to live in a trailer just a few feet from where the family home once stood. Rosemary McFarland will never see their home rebuilt. She died this June. That contributed to Rosemary's death. How so? Because she started going down. Everybody, they're suffering almost a morbid depression. They're depressed. You blame State Farm? Yeah, they don't. They haven't got any money from their insurance that they thought they had, which would have put them back into their lives. 